Well, last time I left you in a bit of a cliffhanger. Well, I don't know if it was the last time, but uh, after video uh, number one, I left you in a cliffhanger position as to how to figure out the friction in the piping that you would be uh, using in your either your house or your uh, your industry or wherever you're needing to figure that out. So we talked about a pumping system that uh, so we'd be going we'd be going from the suction tank to another tank. Usually either higher up and we identified a couple of important points. That's for suction D point two here and point one. So we're pumping from one to two. Now the first thing we have to determine is what flow rate do we need? And this, this is something that you as the designer need to know, need to establish. If it's in a house, well you need flow rates of five to ten gallons a minute depending on the uh, on the uh, application that you're uh, that you're thinking of and how much in a hurry you are, frankly. Uh, so if you want to fill your bath at 10 or 20 gallons a minute, it's not going to take as long as it at 5 gallons a minute. But uh, typically I'd say the bath would need to be filled between 5 and 10 gallons a minute. So if we pick 7 gallons a minute, that would be a, you know, a reasonable first shot at it anyway. So let's say 7 gallons per minute is what we're going to use. And we're going to say that we're going to try and fill a bath at the second floor level. So we're pumping from one to two. Uh, this is our tank, maybe somewhere outside, or it's uh, it's the uh, shallow well, or it's the lake, or you know, wherever your water's coming from. So we said that the difference in pressure uh, between point D and point S divided by the density is equal to the static head. So the static head is the difference in height between points 1 and 2. Not between the pump and the point 2, but 1 and 2 because the fluid particles have to go from 1 to 2. So that's going to be H2 minus H1. And then we have to add the uh, friction. Um, friction, yeah. Between points 1 and 2. So, I said that the uh, friction is available in tables. You can calculate all the friction with formulas, but they're a little bit long and uh, in, uh, uh, not com necessarily complicated, but I, I, want, I want you to get the quick version and get easily going uh, quickly without having to, to figure out a complicated formula. So, with those tables available, you'll find the tables on uh, my website. Uh, so, you need to go to www.pump fundamentals.com and when you come to the main page you'll see a yellow menu you're going to click on more info and when that page comes you'll see pipe friction tables as the second item you click on that and then download so they look something like this uh, a whole bunch of tables for different pipe sizes we have quarter inch three eighths half inch in the next page we have one inch two inch three inch four so they're up to forty some inches so let's say in our case we're looking at uh, let's say a half inch pipe or tube in your house and we want to, we're thinking that we want to pipe, uh, pump it around seven gallons a minute, that would be our goal. So you're going to find a column for seven gallons per minute and you're going to come across onto a column called head loss per feet and uh, at seven the head loss per feet is 48.8, let's say 48 feet per hundred feet. And feet of pipe. Yeah. Why do they say that? Why do they put it that way? Because, uh, well, they don't know how many feet of pipe you have, so uh, they're giving you a, a ratio so that if we know that we have 48, uh, 48 feet per 100 feet, and let's say that we have 50 feet of pipe, so if you have 50 feet of pipe, we divide that by 100 because it's per 100 feet, so we know that we have 48 times 50 over 100, that's a half, 48. We have 24 feet of friction. So this term here is equal to 24 friction. So this is this term here, right, that's 24. Now, pipe-wise, well, 
Typically, the one on the first floor to the second floor might be about 15 feet difference between, well, let's say the, the pump and, but your tank is somewhere, you know, outside. If it's higher than the pump or lower than the pump, that will that'll depend on your particular situation. But let's say the difference between one and two is 15 feet, for example. So this term here is 15 feet. So the total is 15 plus 24, that's uh, 39. And that's telling us that this term here, the amount of pressure difference that the pump has to supply has to be 39 feet. And that's going to be how we're going to size or find a pump that will do the job. Now, this is an awkward term. This is feet and this is feet. So this whole term here must be feet also. Right? I'm just going to rename this and call it H. And that's going to be H. And that term is known as total head. So we need a pump with a total head of 39 feet. Um, so, it sounds a little awkward. I need a pump that has so many feet of head. Uh, you know, why do they use that? I mean, they have their reasons. Uh, I'm going to tell you in a moment. Uh, I mean, you could use pressure, I suppose. You say that I want a pump with a different pressure of so much, or I want a pump with a big motor, a motor of so much. They use feet because, well, one reason, it's very convenient. If I have a pump here connected to a tank, and I'm pumping, let's say I have my pipe going up vertically, like this. Now if I have a long enough pipe, there's going to be a point at which the liquid won't come out, won't come out anymore. And that's going to be the maximum height I can achieve with this pump. So this maximum height is going to be the difference between these two points here. So this, uh, let's, let's give an example, maybe this is uh, 50 feet. So this is what's known as the shutoff head of the pump. The shutoff head of the pump is going to be 50 feet. Now all centrifugal pumps operate on what's called a typical performance curve. It goes something like this. So on, on this axis here we have the head. On this axis here we have the flow. And this is number, let's say, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And this is number 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, let's say. Something like that. So, uh, let's say 50, you match up with what I'm saying here. So, the, if the pump is operating on its curve, when it gets to zero flow, this is zero right here, we're going to be at this point. And that's 50 feet. So, this is how high this pump is going to be able to pump with at zero flow. Of course, normally we want flow, and we're not at zero flow. So the pump is going to be operating somewhere else on its curve. In our case, we want to see something like uh, 5, 7, whatever. So this is 7 here. We would be somewhere around there. And that's, a, that's what we're looking for in terms of a pump. So um, the pump, uh, how, how does it know it operates there? Well, it doesn't know anything, the pump. But uh, once you start it, it's going to fill up the pipes. It's going to try and push water through the pipes at a certain rate. And it's going to eventually come to a, a point where it feels happy pumping there. You know? It's a bit like uh, like a human being. You know, if you're jogging, if you're an adult, you're six foot tall or five foot ten, whatever. Well, maybe you're five foot nine. Okay, um, you're going to run at a certain speed on that because your because your legs are so long and everything else. You, if you're a child, you can't run at that speed because you have you know, tiny little legs. So a pump is the same thing. A big pump, small pump, medium pumps, they all want to do a job at a certain, with a certain capacity because they are physically built for a certain size. So the pump will itself, so that the job of the designer is to, to find the right pump for the right job. Once we've established that uh, we need so much, so many feet of head at a certain flow rate, we can go to the manufacturer, to the store and say, listen, I, I need a pump that will do that job. Uh, at, at uh, let's say, 40 feet of uh, let's say this is 30, 30 feet of head and uh, uh, 7 gallons a minute. I want a pump that will match that uh, operation. And you're probably going to find one. And maybe it may be a little bit, 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 bit bigger than, than you need, but then you'll just have to close down the valve a little bit and, so that you don't have uh, way more floor than, you, floor than you need. And that's essentially how it's done. So 
It's a big piece. I'm going to let you uh, think about that, and uh, we'll try to cover a little bit some of this ground a little bit more, and uh, hopefully in different ways, so that uh, so that uh, this this thing with head and uh, friction and all that you can you know assimilate, and it's not a it's not a not a big deal. It's not a boogie uh, boogeyman or anything. It's really really very easy to understand. So I'll see you next time. A student riding in a train looks up and sees Einstein sitting next to him. Excited, he asks, Excuse me, Professor, does Boston stop at this train? <laughs>